Okay, I am binge weaving tea towels. This is a gorgeous hand painted warp that I had picked up at a, an auction, a weaver's auction, in just a bag of other stuff. And it's A2 cotton, so I'm putting it on there uh, for the next batch of tea towels. I just tied on to the previous warp, so uh, I didn't have to do uh, thread the heddles again. And this is what I'm going to use as my sort of idea template for my first cotton dyeing project. I uh, have up to now only dyed uh, animal fibers, not cellulose fibers. So I have some uh, dyes that I picked up, a dye kit for uh, cellulose fibers, and I'm going to dye some cotton. So I've got a couple uh, spools of 8-2 cotton in uh, bleached and uh, I'm going to wind some warps for that and they are going to be these, you know, the same setup as the blue stripes we have here and uh, in different colors. So that will be the next batch that I will then tie onto this warp. Now, it says to uh, make the dye paint by mixing some dye with a little bit of urea water. I'm going to mix it up in this measuring cup and then pour it into the squeeze bottles. I think that's how we're going to do it. I'm going to make 200 mils of yellow and 150 mils each of the blue and the fuchsia. I find you always need a little bit more yellow than the other colors. So let's go one and a half teaspoons of yellow. I don't know if I'm going to be making enough dye here. No idea. And then I guess I could just pour a little bit. And I think I want to keep it quite thin. I don't want to put the thickener in it. We're going to keep it as thin as water. And I'm going to top it up to 200. Well, maybe I should make it a bit more to make it darker. Let's add a bit more because then I'll be in between the medium and the dark. And yellow, maybe it's a bad idea to add it at this stage. Let's see if I can get those lumps out. I'm going to do it over the sink. So I have my 200 mils of yellow. Gonna go, we're just doing 150 mils of this one, so uh, one and a half teaspoons of the fuchsia. One, two, three, and then top it up to 150 mils. Hundred fifty mils of fuchsia. Let's add a little bit of water first, so the powder isn't sitting at the bottom. And one and a half teaspoons. So that's three half teaspoons of blue. I can still hear some sediment in there. So 
Yeah, it's a little bit more water. All right. So these are my three bottles and I'm going to be doing my color mixing on the yarn. I'm hoping that I can get a full range of rainbow colors with the yellow, fuchsia, and blue, and that we'll get some nice greens and oranges and purples through layering. Let's see. I don't. I also don't know if I have enough dye in here for all that cotton. So let's see. I apologize for the sun coming in through the window, but this is the only place that I can do this. So I guess it's just a matter of putting it on. Oh yeah, wow. This is strong. I may have to flip it. Will there be any blending? Do I pour it on? Let me see. Just working on this one end, see what I can come up with. Oh, it's pretty dark. I think from what I've seen other people do. I think I'm just going to add it all over. Well, let's see what happens when we put some yellow in here. Oh, and it was dripping on here to make a nice green.
there's definitely a technique to this that I have not mastered. And I haven't even been able to flip this to the other side. And I see how my drips have, and my fingertips have caused um, me to contaminate colors. It looks like the color is more or less going through, so I'm not going to worry about, about flipping it. I have a tiny bit of that uh, urea water left, so I'm going to try to mix just a little bit more yellow and fill in all the empty spaces, the little, little spots where I can see light or white, and fill that in with yellow. Just a little bit of pale yellow here. I already have some ideas about what I would do differently. Mind you, this isn't the final color, so maybe my ideas don't mean anything. But I can see how if I used a paler uh, amount, more water, less, less dye, then I uh, I probably could have mixed it better and got more nuances. This is quite garish. I mean, I know a lot of the color is going to wash out because that's how it goes with fiber fiber reactive dyes and a bit of blue little dose of green I really like where the many colors came together. Gives a richer, a richer look. I'm definitely getting a good idea of how this applies to the yarn. Seems like about the right amount of dye. All right, I'm gonna call it a day on this. So here is the warp. And yeah, lots of drips and mistakes. That's a nice area. And definitely lots of primaries remaining, not as many mixtures as maybe could have happened. So, but this has given me lots of good information so that I can do, make it do what I want it to do next time. But now I'm going to roll this up and put it aside until tomorrow. So get rid of all this extra colorful liquid that's sitting around the outside edges. Now, as far as I understand, it does not need to be heated. Just rolled up and put away for a while. It said hours, but if it's very dark, um, 24 hours is a good idea. So I'm going to do it until tomorrow or until I can't stand it any longer and I just need to unroll it and wash it. <laughs> so 
going to fold over the edges. So, and roll up my jelly roll. Now, plastic uh, not only keeps all the moisture in, but it stops the color from transferring onto uh, the previous layer. So there it is. Not too much of a mess here, after all. I don't think I got any on the floor, so that's great. So I'm gonna put this uh, aside. It sits in a warm place, and we wait. And tomorrow I'll unroll it and wash it out. Now the instruction said that the temperature must be at room temperature of at least 22 degrees Celsius. And we keep our house quite cool, so it's not that warm. So I found a warm place in the house for my jelly roll to sit overnight. The bundle has been removed from its toasty place in front of the fire. And I'm really glad that I wrapped it in the towel because I can see a damp spot right here. But there definitely was leakage. So, good thing I had it wrapped in the towel and on plastic. What a beautiful jelly roll. So, gloves. And now I have been warned there's a lot of rinsing involved in fiber reactive dyes. So we're gonna unwrap this beautiful jelly roll. Zip tie through there. And we will start with the first of many, many rinses. And you can just see the water turning a deep whatever color that is. Wow. The color in fiber reactive dyes just oh my goodness, this is <laughs> this is so unlike what I'm used to with the acid dyes. Look at this, Darius. The, the water doesn't run clear when you're using fiber reactive. Oh, ew. Ew, that looks disgusting. Okay, I'm back after helping with some language arts homework and we're still looking at a deep red interesting it's almost turning a raspberry color now so 
So the red's definitely the strongest color because that's what's overwhelmingly being washed out. The instructions tell me that once the color starts diminishing a bit, to put the yarn in a very hot soak with a little bit of synthropyl. So that was less than five minutes, but already we have lots of clearing. The water is pink, but I can see to the bottom it's not opaque, so. Colors sure are bright. Oh, that's a fuchsia coming out. Ooh, look how transparent the water is getting. I don't know how long this is going to take to rinse, but I'm just going to keep doing this off camera and then we'll take a look at it once the water is clear. I hope that eventually happens. <laughs> so this is very encouraging. After another uh, round of synthropol and hot water and a few soaks because I kept being interrupted by various things. Um, yeah, we seem to have some clear water here. So I think there, if I squeeze it, we might get a hint of color. Maybe, well, maybe not. Look at that. Maybe the very slightest of purple. So one or two more, one or two more rinses and I can squeeze this out and hang it to dry. I do not have a spinner. That would be nice. So here is the dry warp. And it's gorgeous! Look at that deep color. Mmm. So this is my first fiber reactive dye project and I'm really happy with it. Uh, I had no idea what was going to happen as I put the colors on the warp and mixed them right on the warp. These were just three colors that I then uh, overlapped and created uh, secondary colors. So the colors in my bottle were a blue, a uh, magenta I believe it was and a yellow there's the yellow and by overlapping we ended up with a green some purples and some oranges where's a good orange there's an orange not sure oh it's looking so blue on the on the camera but in, in actuality, it's very, very warm. So there's a nice orange. So I'm gonna chain this up and then we'll take another look at it. As I'm chaining this up, there are little areas that I'd like to pursue maybe as future color schemes. I really like what's happening just in this area right here. 
and I think I'll have to um, sort of analyze what happened and then try to recreate what I see here. This is another area where I really like what's happening. The color changes are in a very small area. It quickly changes from one color to another. And I really like that. There's some nice teals in here. So here it is all chained up. 15 yards of 8-2 cotton. Uh, 200 ends. So the color is going to change fairly often down the length. I think every... Uh, tea towel that this is going to make is going to have a little bit of each of the colors blended uh, in a slightly different way. So even if I use the same pattern and the same uh, weft for every tea towel, each one will be slightly different as uh, the blend and heaviness of each color will change and be different on each one. So tons of fun. Can't wait to see what it looks like on the loom. And I have to decide whether this will be alternated with a white uh, warp chain or a black one. I haven't decided yet. I have my cotton warp on the loom. And I think it looks just awesome. I love the color changes that are happening. And I'm weaving my third tea towel. I'm using a black boucle. And I'm using uh, the treadling number one, the very simple one that alternates uh, various plain weaves. This plain weave happening in checkerboard pattern, sort of. And I love how it looks under a black weft. Very cool. The next tea towel is in a white cotton boucle. And that really mutes the warp. But I think maybe that is kind of a nice effect. It kind of looks pastel-like. And maybe sort of for a lighter kitchen without the intensity of the black. I think it looks kind of cool. So this is a cotton weft, organic cotton in black. All right, I just finished another tea towel and I'm going to try a different treadling just for the fun of it. I've made about 50 tea towels uh, on this exact threading and tried a variety of treadlings and uh, I'm looking for something different. I played around on Fiberworks and uh, came up with a few more. Uh... And here is towel number 12. Interesting line here. I think when winding on, a little, little section got pulled tighter than the rest. So that's kind of cool. But the color changes are still very exciting to me as I weave. This part here looks so Northern Lights to me. So I'm going to file that information away and think about a Northern Lights themed towel and more, even scarves. And uh, yeah, thinking about the, the dyeing process to create something like that uh, deliberately. So this is treadling number three from Davison's book. 
tea towel number 13 with a simple twill. I love some of the color mixing going on. Mm. Towel number 14. And this is one of my made up treadlings. Let's do a critique. This is the first stack of towels complete. I still have a, a stack waiting to be hemmed, but I'm very excited about what, what I got. Let's just go through these one at a time. I've already tagged them all with my uh, label and my price and, and all the information. So this is the very basic uh, plain weave and on this one I used a black uh, boucle weft and it weaves up very quickly and I love how the dyeing just creates the interest in the color changes as you go along so uh, this is a, a quick technique but very effective and I'm definitely going to be making more towels um, with this treadling and this is one of my made up treadlings. I'm going to put the draft on my Patreon uh, along with uh, you know the tie up and the treadling and everything so that uh, you can try this if you like. I believe this is another one of my treadlings. Each towel is slightly different because I didn't know how the colors were going to turn up in the weaving process. But here's another one of the plain weave towels and this uh, has the white boucle weft. So instead of all that black and the darkness that we've had uh, up to now, we've got some, um, it, this sort of lightens it up a bit. Um, it does tone it down, of course, it's not as bright as as that, but I really like it. And of course, every towel has its uh, tag on there that I sew on. It's the last thing I do. That's another of the same. And this is a treadling from Davison. These last two are the same. The same treadling. And then I have a few more that are still uh, in the sewing pile. So uh, you can probably see those in the shop in the next little while as I finish the sewing and the hemming of them. A big thank you to my patrons whose financial help is helping to keep this channel going. It's very much appreciated. The links to my patrons and my online store as well as my website are in the description below. Thank you for watching.